the retirement of longtime Senator Linda Berglund resulted in an important opening on the Senate Health and Human Services Committee. Tony Laurie will fill the seat as the lead minority on this committee. We caught up with him at the State Fair to get his thoughts on his new position. Senator Laurie, first of all, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely, always a pleasure. With former chair of the HHS committee, Senator Berglund stepping down, you're now the lead Democrat. What do you hope to bring to, this, to the committee and to that role in particular? Well, I've, uh, I've got a long history working in health policy, even before getting elected. I was a consultant to state and local governments and tried to help them redesign and restructure and refinance their health and human service agencies. So I've worked in this arena for a very long time, and I, I think I um, bring a, a pretty good experience, and I've got uh, the ability to try to think long term. You need several things in this role. You need a backbone, you need a brain, and you need a heart. You know, and if you can put those three together and never lose the balance, um, you're going to do okay, and I'm going to do my very best. I've got very big shoes to fill. Linda Berglund is an institution around the state senate, and um, she's uh, led Minnesota to one of the leading positions in the nation in terms of uh, good, quality, affordable health care for our residents, and it's some, it's a, it's a something a very proud accomplishment for her and uh, I look forward to, to working and doing my very best to fill those big shoes. We spoke with the chair of the HHS committee, Senator Han, a bit earlier and we talked specifically about the health insurance exchange. What role do you think the legislature should have and the HHS committee in particular have in developing an exchange? Well I think that uh, you know an exchange is coming. The question is do we allow the feds to come in and, and institute the, the national exchange, or do we have a Minnesota model? And I think there's very, very little uh, disagreement with the basic premise that if there's going to be an exchange in Minnesota with our leading position in healthcare policy, it should be a Minnesota exchange. And so I think it's uh, great that the governor is working hard and his administration is working hard to uh, work with all of the interests, uh, the, the health care interests, and um, look forward to working in the legislature to help craft that. You know, last year was the first year in a new, uh, in a new world in the legislature with a, a new majority party, and truthfully, it was a budget year, and there wasn't a lot of time to have conversations about everything that needed to happen, and so it's not surprising that there wasn't a great deal of attention in the legislature for the exchange concept, but I think that um, with this uh, additional time and going into the second year of a biennium where we won't have, you know, we've got the budget settled, you know, we could, that's another whole topic, we're going to leave that one aside for right now, but I think it'll be good to get in and talk about what a Minnesota-based exchange can and should look like, because I think just about everybody understands that if there's going to be an exchange, it really should be a Minnesota one. We've worked very hard to get ourselves in a position um, where we have um, better uh, better costs and outcomes than most any other state in the country. And Senator Han said he hopes to begin hearings on this issue in the next few weeks. As the new lead Democrat, are you going to be ready? Oh, absolutely. I, that's the first I've heard of it, but I'm uh, absolutely. I'll come down. I got. Uh, I just got off a farm panel here at the state fair and. Um, farming issues, I got the last of my hay in, I got a little cleanup to do, got to go get it off the fields and whatnot, but uh, that can be timed around anything. If there's hearings, I'll be there. Okay, I want to ask you a question that was on the State Fair Opinion Poll. It addresses health care, and it's asking Minnesotans to weigh in on whether or not they believe the state should remain in control of the health care system or implement the federal health care program. How much weight will you give those results being a part of the HHS committee? <laughs> well, this is my first stop at the State Fair, and um, I haven't read the questionnaire yet, uh, but honestly, you know, forever, it's, it's not a representative sample, really. It's, it's good to take the pulse of people um, just at first blush with that question. I don't know who crafted it. It, it didn't sound like, um, number one, it's, it's just people who step forward and fill it in. Number two, that sounded a bit leading to me. How much credibility is it going to have? I don't know, not, you know, not, not a terrible lot in, in my book. I mean, I think that what people think is very important to me. And I get out um, as frequently as I can and work with uh, people, consumers of, of health care, you know, just people 
I work with uh, hospitals, nurses, nursing homes, and do try to take a real pulse on what's happening in our communities and work hard with those interests and listen to them as they come to St. Paul and tell their stories and, and try to do the best that we can. But, you know, we'll, we'll take it all and, and listen to it all and weigh it and, and do the very best we can. Okay, Senator Laurie, my last question for you is looking ahead into the next legislative session. As a member of the minority, are there particular areas of policy that you're going to try to make public, make sure that your message is known, and perhaps work with the Republicans on getting some legislation passed? Well, you know, I think there, there's actually a, a, a real opportunity here. Last session, again, uh, new leadership. We, in a budget year, we got very consumed in the legislature with the budget. Um, historically, you know, policy bills come from all of the agencies, um, and uh, we typically try to keep those pretty non-controversial and just get them passed. I myself, when I was a member of the majority working under uh, an administration of the opposite party, I took dozens of those policy bills and shepherded them through the process, kept them clean, made sure they got done. It's the nuts and bolts of running government. They, they're the ones administering the programs that we create and they, they see what needs to be changed and tweaked and they bring those to the legislature. They all failed this last session. We didn't even pass as a legislature any of the, the, the policy bills that are even non-controversial. So it's gonna be a really good opportunity, I think, to sit and learn how to work together by picking up some of the policy bills that are non-controversial and just start building some of these working relationships. I've got a history of working well with my friends across the aisle and uh, hope to draw a lot of those, um, uh, uh, draw on a lot of those relationships and start with some of those policy bills, the nuts and bolts of making the public sector work efficiently and hopefully we can go from there on to many of the bigger ticket items. Okay, Senator Tony Laurie, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, my pleasure, thank you.